Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk about a process that to me shouldn't work, but actually does work uh, and it, it works pretty well sometimes. And that's using Photoshop to put together a starless mosaic image. So stay tuned and I will show you how to do it. So let's talk about the process and I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the end result. This is the image that I want to get to and it's a mosaic of the jellyfish nebula and the monkey head nebula over here. So it's a three panel mosaic and because I prefer to work in a starless workflow, what I'm really after is ultimately three layers that would be first at the bottom would be the the narrow band, or in this case, a, a dual narrow band filter using the uh, Optolong L Enhance filter. And that gives me the bulk of the nebula information. And you'll notice that that's starless. Uh, but then I want some, some regular RGB because there is quite a bit of reflection nebula, especially over here in the, by the jellyfish. So we want to add some of that reflection nebulosity to the image. And then lastly, I want the stars on top as their own layer so I can control the, the nebula and the stars independently. The problem is how do you get all of that to line up because you've got three panels of both narrow band, or in this case, dual narrow band, and RGB from a one-shot color camera. So let me jump over to PixInsight and we'll start walking through the process of how we get to this point. So, as with all of my projects, I start in WBPP, uh, usually after first going through the, the subs and making sure that I take out any bad ones because bad subs don't add anything. All they do is take away. And you'll notice that we've got two groupings. There's the data from the L Enhance filter and the data from the luminosity filter. And they're designated as being part of pane one, pane two, and pane three. And then the same way with the luminosity, pane one, two, and three. And there's not a lot of data here and what there is isn't the best data, but it, it works for this demonstration. If we look at the calibration tab, uh, again, it looks pretty simple. We've got uh, the two groups of the L Enhance and the Luminosity. But the first trick that we want to use is using the grouping keywords over here. And I've defined pain as a grouping keyword. And you do that by typing the word pain up here and then hitting the, the plus. And then I selected that and used the gear icon to change whether that keyword is applied to pre-processing, post-processing, or both. And it just cycles through the three states. And the one we want is just post-processing. <clears throat> and then on registration information, I have this auto by pane. So it will register the, the groups by pane. If we look at post calibration, then we can see we have six files that are going to be created. There's the L Enhance data for pane one, two, and three, and then the luminosity for panes one, two, and three. So the end result of running this is going to be six master files uh, for two panes or three panes times two filters. And I've already done that. And the results are down here. And let's just grab one to look at. So this is, this happens to be pane two of the L Enhance. And what I've done is just kind of step through some very repeatable basic processes on each one of these six panes. So for each one, when I opened it from the master file, I ran a quick uh, dynamic background extraction just using sample points around the perimeter. And I didn't make any other changes. I just selected that and ran the dynamic background extraction. Then I did a, uh, let's see, on the L Enhance, the next thing I did was just a simple uh, screen transfer function stretch uh, and copied that to the histogram, again, without any changes. So it's just the, the basic uh, STF stretch. <clears throat> I did the same thing to all three of these, so they're all identical. 
and then saved these as 16-bit TIFFs. So I have three 16-bit files saved. And then I did this basically the same thing with the luminosity with one difference. With the luminous, luminosity data, after I did the dynamic background extraction, I also did a, uh, a photometric or spectrophotometric color calibration to get the correct colors in the stars. And if you recall, the main thing I'm after with this layer is the, uh, uh, the color of the stars and the RGB stars. And you can see we've got some problems here. I don't know if, I think we had some clouds that may have drifted through and caused this portion of this frame to have some bloated stars. So that's gonna take some extra cleanup in Photoshop, but it, it still works and it still demonstrates the process. So again, I processed these uh, with the spectrophotometric color calibration and then applied a screen stretch and saved these as 16-bit TIFFs. So now we have six 16-bit TIFFs that we've saved. And let's pop over to Photoshop to put these together. And what I want to do is go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me use this before. Just click Browse and navigate to the folder where I saved the TIFF files. And there are the, the six <coughs> TIFF files that I saved. Click OK and then OK to proceed. And it will load each one of those six files on their own separate layer. And so now it's time kind of for the magic. You can see the layers are grouped with three luminosities and then three enhance. And we want to create a, a mosaic out of each one of these, but we want the mosaics to be aligned with each other so that the stars in the, the luminosity or the RGB data align with the stars in the L enhance data. The trick, and again, it seems like it shouldn't work, but it does, is just select all six of these and go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, and then just choose Auto and click OK. And what Photoshop's going to do is go through and create a mosaic as best it can. And since the Layer 1 data and the Layer 2 data and the th Layer 3 data all more or less coincide, you'll see that what it actually does is create two sets of data. So if we look at just the, the top three, and I'll just hit Control G real quickly to drop these three into a group. This is the luminosity data, all aligned. And if I turn it off, you'll see that below are the three L enhance. And again, they're aligned with each other at the boundaries and they're aligned with the luminosity layer. So we really got two mosaics uh, in one step. So I'll just quickly drop these into a, a group also. Now we need to blend the, the layers. <clears throat> and to do that, I'll go to each group by itself. So we'll pick just the uh, L enhance. And now we'll go to edit auto blend layers. And we want the method to be panorama. We want to make sure that seamless tone and colors is checked. Click OK. And what Photoshop's going to do is based on the content, it's going to blend these together and it'll actually create a mask then to separate the uh, three layers. And the end result will be what looks like just one consolidated layer. And again, there's some, some differences in the color, probably because of combinations of clouds and moonlight. Um, but we just do the same thing now with the luminosity data, select those three, go to edit, auto blend layers, click OK, and it will do the same thing to blend these together. The end result then is I have two mosaics with stars, you know, pretty, you know, pretty unprocessed, just the basic stretched function. Uh, but each one of these now can be saved as a 16-bit TIFF. And if we zoom in, and for instance, let's turn off the luminosity. You can see that everything is aligned quite well between the luminosity and the L enhance and whatever small changes there were are replicated across all three. 
So now it's just a simple job of selecting file, save a copy, because we want to save this as a specific copy. And we'll save these as, again, 16-bit TIFFs. But we're going to save it when we get the, the TIFF save options. We're going to save it as discard layers and save a copy. So it's going to save this as just one flat 16-bit TIFF file. And of course, I've already done that. So we can pop back over to PixInsight. <clears throat> and if we look at those files, this is the L Enhance. And let me just go back and so this is what it looked like when I first when I first opened it. Uh, basically, I just did two things here. I can run noise exterminator on this if I feel like there's a lot of noise. In this case, the resolution is so high that noise just gets lost. And then I can run star exterminator to remove the stars. And that gives me a nice more or less starless 16-bit TIFF image that I can save. And then I do the same thing with the luminosity, creating both a starless, and in this case, I saved the stars. So the end result then is the L Enhance that has most of the, the good narrowband data, the luminosity that has some good additional information from reflection nebulae, and then the stars on a layer by themselves. And it's ultimately these three files that I bring into Photoshop as layers. In the image we just looked at, and after some retouching to clean things up, taking out the, uh, the star artifacts and so forth, uh, there's the L Enhance data on a layer by itself. There's the luminosity or RGB data in lighten blending mode. So it's just adding information where there's reflection nebula and then the stars on the top layer. So I hope you found this useful. It's kind of a uh, kind of a niche application of doing a, a starless workflow with a multi-pane mosaic. Uh, and it doesn't always work. Uh, Photoshop sometimes will do this just like magic and other times it will fail. And if you look closely, you'll see that you have duplicate stars in some of the overlap areas. So you do need to be careful with it, but when it works, it works like magic. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find this sort of content useful. And as always, I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks.